Okay, I've already spotted you the two chairs themselves, and these are just two chairs flipped relative to each other. Uh, your job is to pick out which carbon you want to be carbon number one, which one will be number three, and then to draw the right bonds extending from those carbons. So I'm going to let this be my carbon one over here on the left side of this, and I'll let carbon three be that one and it's going to necessarily be true that carbon 1 has an axial down position and an equatorial up position and it's going to be the same situation for carbon 3 so it's important that I get those angles at least approximately correct okay now we're drawing the trans isomer so uh, no matter where I put the methyl group on carbon 1 it's going to be at the opposite side for carbon 3 so if I put the methyl up here equatorial up, then uh, it's going to be down and lo and behold axial down if I put it on carbon 3 and there will be hydrogens at the other locations. So this is 1, 3, it is trans and although I can get one of the methyl groups to be equatorial, the other one is forced to be axial. And if I flip that ring, uh, one thing I want to make sure of is that I don't renumber my carbons in a different way. What was carbon 1 on the left structure is now this same carbon. The flipping has made it change locations on the paper, but I want to label carbon number 1 as the same atom in both structures, and that means that what's carbon 3 is now located at this point. It's going to be true that what was equatorial up is now axial up, and that's where that methyl group was, and that hydrogen that was axial down is now equatorial down on carbon 1. Here are the two bonds for carbon 3, an axial up and an equatorial down. And again, I keep the same connections here. So in both of these structures, we've got one axial methyl group, one equatorial, so these would be equal in stability. So that's the best you can do with the trans 1,3 isomer. Down below here we're doing the same thing for the cis. So I can still use the same bonds that I just did. Ooh, that's an ugly looking axial bond there. It's not much better, is it? Drawing the bonds the same way. But now with cis, that means I have to make sure the two methyl groups are in a cis arrangement. And if I draw them both axial down, uh, that means that that's not going to be as good a situation as what I can draw if I flip that ring. Again, here's carbon 1 over here, and so now it's in an axial up position. But flipping the ring puts that methyl group at an equatorial position. Notice it's still down, but it's equatorial down. And here at carbon 3, again, it's got an axial up and equatorial down position. And as a virtue of flipping that, it has the effect of putting an axial methyl group now equatorial. So as I say, when we flip rings, everything that's axial is equatorial and vice versa. But I want to make sure that once I've labeled my carbons as 1 and 3 on the left, that kind of dictates where they're going to be on the flipped version of that ring. And this one on the right is going to be more stable than the one on the left. And because in the cis isomer I can get both methyl groups to be equatorial, that makes the cis isomer more stable than the trans. The trans up above here, I could only get one of the groups, one of the methyl groups to be equatorial. So in this case, for the 1,3 isomer, cis is better than trans. The other examples we had seen, it turned out that trans isomers were more stable than cis, but that's not always true. It depends on where the methyl groups are located and what size the ring is. So we have to draw out the structures to really know for sure.